And welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben and this is my review for Netflix's original series, The Silent Sea. First up, there is a warning here because Netflix haven't given the warning. It's a weird warning to give for a TV series. But if you suffer from hemetophobia, that is the fear of people throwing up uh, or throwing up yourself, there is a lot of that in this series. You're going to see people throwing up a liquid. And that is my warning it's not a spoiler, it's just a thing that happens a lot in the series that some people really struggle with that. And if immediately if you see this, you're like, ah, oh, I'm triggered. So that's my warning. On that happy note, let's jump in. During a perilous 24-hour mission on the moon, space explorers try to retrieve samples from an abandoned research facility steeped in classified secrets. One of the actresses you'll probably recognize, apart from the few Bea Duna, she was in a number of films that you've probably seen that are quite quirky and weird, uh, but also really interesting. Cloud Atlas, The Host, I thought she was excellent in that. She was also in a couple of the Netflix other series, uh, The Stranger for three seasons, Kingdom. Uh, so you'll recognize her face. And she is for the most part one of the main main protagonists we have a crew here that are sent to a space station on the moon to find out what has happened to the previous crew i guess the people on this station that it's on the moon uh at, as well as they they're sent to retrieve something that's very specific earth is in dire distress. there is a, a water shortage massively and so kind of the only hope is for whatever data whatever is in this capsule that they have to retrieve is to get that and come back and somehow uh, that's going to help them. It's all steeped in massive classifiedness and so they don't even tell the crew really what's happening. They have all these experts and so along the way they jump into this mission going okay we're going to do what needs to be done. Also this is a mission to the moon so that's pretty cool. I love me some sci-fi especially love it when it's you know sci-fi somewhat scientifically based. This is going to push the boundaries of the logical kind of moments. If, you're, if, you're, if your logic brain is going to kick in and say, hang on a minute, uh, especially when it comes to health and safety stuff, like the way they are exposed to certain contaminants, uh, what they would do. So when someone is contaminated with uh, a thing that's sprayed, even if you're wearing a hazardous suit, you would have to have that hazardous suit sprayed afterwards. There are things in this that just are not believable as to what they would actually do in this in the situation. There are a number of things throughout the series that will make you pause and go, uh, hang on a minute. I'm not sure that's right. If you manage to put that all aside, then I think you're going to have some fun with this series. Eight episodes, around about 40 minutes to 50 minutes long, depending on the episode. And it jumps in right at the beginning. So if you're wondering, uh, is it slow? It's slow in parts. It definitely has a lull in the middle, but it jumps in the beginning and then goes back to show us what happened, how they got to that thing that starts that it starts off with. Now, of course, there wouldn't be much of a story if things didn't go wrong. And that's where the, the tenseness and the excitement comes in the storyline. We get to experience with the crew as they start figuring out what's actually happened on this station. And so in amongst the tenseness, we are in space. So you're dealing with air contingencies, like how much air you need to get to a certain place. Then there's the pressure, the, the, the units, like everything's got to be up and running and contained specifically or in their pods. Then there's uh, the, the contaminant thing that I was talking about earlier. Then there's um, another MacGuffin plot point that makes it very scary, but I'm not going to spoil that for you. If you think... Event Horizon, Aliens, um, and all those kind of sci-fi space series that you've seen. And take little bits of that. That's ser This series seems to pull from that. There are corridor scenes, like loads and loads of corridor scenes, where it's dark and people are breathing heavily, or people are talking to each other on the comms, or they're following that, that motion tracker. On the <laughs> There's all of that. So it kind of takes all the boxes for this type of space sci-fi that you would want. I would say I think it could have been six episodes. It would have been quicker, sharper, to the point. There are some heavy dialogue exposition scenes or just moments where they take a really long time to deliver the moments that they are trying to deliver. Uh, when people are remembering and they do the classic flashback scenes and that is kind of building up the characters. For once in a series, I would love flashbacks not to be used to build backstory for a character. I've seen it done in some of the best sci-fi films where they don't do backstory. They do in the moment telling them what they've experienced in an action or a, a movement. Something's happening in the scene and you kind of just get what, what 
that character has gone through in a single line of dialogue and suddenly that adds so much more weight. Now some of this series does that with the character sometimes. So you'll find yourself going, I don't really know much about the character but what I do know I really like or I dislike. Some of that is really strong in this. But it does tend to lead lean on some of our protagonists with the flashbacks to try and get you emotionally engaged with our characters. And it helps somewhat, but it also really slows down the pace because of those flashback scenes. I would say even watching it on 1.5 speed would still not be enough for a couple of those middles, those middle episodes. But it's still definitely needed because there are moments in there that explains some of the story and the arc of what's happening for you to actually get to grips of, oh, okay, it's a puzzle piece that I need to put together. And there's some reveals there that you'll be like, oh, I didn't see that coming. So where the story starts, you think you might guess everything, but I didn't guess every bit of the plot point, which is nice and fresh. Sometimes you can guess plot beat for plot point, but also it didn't like take me by surprise. I'd be like, yeah, well, humans being humans doing stupid things, of course we're going to do that. You have to ask yourself sometimes in series like, the, like this, does this earth deserve to be saved because sometimes they do such horrific things you gotta think well if we get this thing that's actually gonna save us what are we gonna do with it are we actually gonna save us or we're we just gonna use it as a weapon or we're we gonna use it to destroy our enemies or will we just end up killing ourselves because we're not taking the right safety protocols it has a lot of those questions well i definitely had a lot of those questions going through mine so where i enjoyed some of the sci-fi and enjoyed the tenseness I was umming and ahhing about some of the questions it was bringing up in my mind. I think the acting, for the most part, is pretty um, on point. I think the characters, once you start um, understanding who they are, once they're fleshed out a bit, you can get to grips with how, um, I guess, how they are as a person in that moment. It really stands out. You see how a doctor would react. You see how a person of in intellectual... Um, guys reacts to a, an action sequence or you see the captain who is used to action will react and so you kind of understand who they are and people thrust in a circumstance that is that is really filled with tension i think that works well i do think some of the cgi didn't quite work for me the beginning episode had me a little worried because there were some of the rocket scenes that just didn't look great and there are also model scenes that you just know that they're models there was a couple of moments like that that took me out of it. It is not the best series um, from Korea that I've seen recently, but it definitely is a very enjoyable watch for a Christmas Eve series, a sci-fi series that I could stand to watch more of if they have a really good series. It does feel like they could do a one and done and that'll be it. And if I was going to rate it as a one and done, I'd probably give it three and a half Nicolas Cage's out of five. That would be my rating. So that is my review. But I kind of want to talk about the ending now. Um, so if you don't want spoilers, then please run away and don't listen to this. Thanks so much for watching this, but let's talk about the ending. In the ending, we have the, re the reveal of the cloned girl um, who is able to breathe air. She is able to heal. She, her DNA has been manipulated enough so that the water isn't duplicating inside her body. So she can breathe air. She can move ridiculously fast. She's a super powerful. She's basically like not even human anymore. Her eyes do that thing, you know. <laughs> was like a gill so she somehow doesn't need to breathe there or is able to use whatever oxygen whatever atmosphere there is on the moon um she is able to use that maybe she's using oxygen in the water the water is maybe providing that oxygen for her. however it's manipulating however body's changed she seems to be fine but it does leave certain questions open for example why did they need to put the locator around her ankle but that suggests that we may have use of her in the future because it doesn't go anywhere so right at the end we get that locator of her she's on the moon and it looks like she's going to stay on the moon because as they all said that she's going to be experimented on if she goes back to earth they wanted to take her to another space station but seeing her free on the moon seems to be her place at home and she also seems to have a need to drink the water the lunar water so obviously being on the moon would really help with that is she reliant on it we don't really know we know she can eat normal food as we've seen her being given that sweet but we also know that her dna is completely changed she's been manipulated to be a different species really we also have our main protagonist who's also survived the duplication of the water effect 
And I do wonder if she now is going to be the next kind of guinea pig on Earth if we get a second season. I'm not sure, but that would be a way they could take some of her blood and that could help Earth survive. And then we have the captain who looked like he was dead after the ice spat his body out. We see his visor de-illuminate, but Luna gives the little badge back that is from his daughter. He could be alive. We, we didn't see him actually get injured. His suit could be in one piece. There's a lot of believability that you have to take on because technically, all, you know, all of that ice and them pushing, it could have punched their suits easily. All three of the astronauts that survived, um, they should have died many times over. But that's this is science, science fiction, right? It's not science fact. So we're going along with that storyline. So if we we're going to get a second season, it could be about Luna on the moon, another team hunting her, what they've done with the water, whether Earth is now got water back and they've managed to manipulate it so that it doesn't attack any, anybody and they could take that storyline and again have the water start to resisting whatever transformation we've given it and that would be an interesting way to go maybe we have to relocate to the moon it would be interesting to see if we could do that because our technology seems such that we could maybe start terraforming the moon or or mars something like that it would be an interesting way to go it would have to be a really tight series this probably is a one and done because I don't get the feeling that it's going to hit all round for everybody. I didn't mind it. I thought it was enjoyable as a one time watch. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you're enjoying your holidays however you celebrate them. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long and Tuesday.